ان الحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله اصله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا ثم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يقول سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد ان اقول اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم اولئك يجزون الغرفه بما صبروا ويلقون فيها تحيه وسلاما خالدين فيها حسنه مستقرا ومقاما رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي والله ما ثبتنا عند الموت بلا اله الا الله والله اجعلنا من الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر امين يا رب العالمين Inshallah ta'ala today in this khutbah I'd like to share with you the last passage of Surah Al-Furqan just some reflections from this last very beautiful passage of the surah and interestingly from a language point of view that entire almost page and page and a half is is a matter of fact one large sentence and in the language sense and I don't I won't get too technical with you in the language sense even in English you have what's called a subject and a predicate you have the beginning of a sentence and then you have the conclusion And in Arabic linguistics and in Baraha and other studies they they say that the muqtada or the the subject of a sentence is there to create the shriq to to make you curious. So to give you an easy example so you can follow along the purpose the premise of this entire khutbah inshallah is if I was to start my sentence with just a small word and now this is the first time for example I'm coming to Dearborn and I said the town of Dearborn and that's just how I start my sentence I just say the town of Dearborn and I'm talking to a friend of mine Before I finish my sentence he's curious what are you going to say about the town of Dearborn what's your opinion of it and that's the, what's coming is actually just because of my opening it's created a curiosity friends are talking among each other about sports one of them mentions a team you know the lakers and you're like okay that's your subject what are you going to say about the lakers because if you like them i hate you or something you know so you create the curiosity So what happens in these ayat there are multiple ayat all of them at the end of the day amount to just the muqtada all of them at the end of the day are not the conclusion they're just the introduction by Allah azza wa jalla and so Allah describes different kinds of people in these ayat as we'll go through them different kinds of people are described but the question is created what about these people what about them and so what i read to you in the masnoon part of the khutbah the arabic that i read to you were the last ayat which are actually the answer to that curiosity what about them ulaika yujzawna al-ghurfata bima sabaru those are the people that will be paid with the highest lofty mansions really high mansions because of the patience they showed bima sabaru and this uh, the word ma here is also in tawkid and the mubalagha they say in arabic to suggest they had a lot of patience these people they were extremely persevering people And as a result they get the highest one of the highest places in Jannah. Wa yulaqawna fiha tahiyatan wa salaman from the very time they're brought into contact with it they come into it they are greeted with you know tahiyya the greetings and peace are, is is salutations are given to them. These are honored people. It's almost as though they're being paraded for as they walk into Jannah. May Allah make all of us from them. So now in these beginning ayat Allah describes who are these people who get to Jannah because of the patience they show. And what did they have to show patience in? Allah begins the passage wa ibadur rahman alladhina yamshuna 'ala al-ardhi hawna. The slaves of the incredibly merciful and loving one. Ibadur rahman. Now, ibad is a common term in the Quran and it's actually there are in, from the language perspective two plurals that Allah uses. He uses ibad for his servants and his slaves and also for his creation he uses abid. Abid some ulama say ibad is the jama' of abid and abid from abd so there are two different ones but abid is also they're both also considered by other you know linguists like Ibn al-Mamur they're considered both plurals of abd so sometimes Allah describes all of us as abid 
Sometimes he describes all of us as ibad. But abid is used in the Quran for everyone. Allah does not intend wrong for any of his slaves, all of them together. But the ibad is used in special places. So by using the word ibad already, Allah is describing these people as special. Then associating them with himself, he could have said ibadullah. But he didn't say that here, he said ibad rahman And al-Rahman, as you might already know, is one of the most powerful names of Allah as well as describing his love, his care, his mercy how he envelops someone and completely protects them and wants good for them. These are things that are captured inside the meanings of Ar-Rahman. So Allah puts that name of his next to these people. First of all, the word for them is special. Then he uses one of his most special names to describe them as though these people get special love from Allah. They get special mercy from Allah. They're not ordinary people. And what's the first quality he describes of them? He says, الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا those who walk around on the earth humil humbly. They have humility when they walk. That doesn't seem like a hard accomplishment. It's not that difficult. At the, at the same time, it's kind of hard to prove. I mean, how do you know someone's walking on the earth with humility? You know, other places in the Quran, Allah does describe some very outwardly arrogant styles of walking. You know, وَلَا تَمْشِي فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحًا إِنَّكَ لَن تَخْلِقَ الْأَرْضِ وَلَا تَمْلُغَ الْجِبَالَ طُولًا Allah tells the, the human being who's arrogant, don't walk on the earth all like fully yourself. Sticking out your chest and like, like, like staring people down, waiting until they look down. And you go, that's right. Yeah, you know what's up. You know? Not like that. You're not gonna, who do you think you are? How, how big do you think your step is? You're gonna cause cracks on the earth? Who do you think you are? You're not gonna reach the heights of the mountains. What, what, what do you think you are? So Allah puts people in their place when it comes to walking humbly. But here in this beautiful ayah, Allah gave actually a proof. A litmus test. How do you know that you, and how do I know that I am walking on the earth? Humbly. He says, وَإِذَا خَافَ بَهُمُ الْجَاهِدُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامٌ If you consider this wow, not just wow al-'at, but wow al-bayan, wow bayaniya, then what you get is, and as a result, and that the proof of that is, that when they address people that have no restraints, jahidun, jahidun are people who just say whatever comes to their mouth. There are some people in life that are very obnoxious. They're very offensive. Actually, they get a kick out of being offensive. There are people that love to say things just to get you to, your blood to boil. You might have some people like that in your family. Some of you young guys sitting here are like, oh, I think my uncle is like that. Or you know, my friend or whoever. Or even at work, or you're just, you know, you're, you're driving down the street and some guy next to you in a car. Or at the store, somebody makes comments. You're going shopping with your family, makes a comment about Muslims or something, you know? These idiots, these fools that don't watch what they say, this is a jahil. The opposite of jahil in Arabic is a aqid, someone who restrains himself, someone who holds himself back, someone who uses his intellect before he opens his mouth. In any case, Allah says, إِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُ وَلَمْ يَقُلْ إِنْ خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُ There's a benefit in that too. It will eventually happen. Allah didn't say if the ignorant address them, He said when. The point is it will happen. You will face people that are hard to deal with that are difficult to listen to. And you will be put in that situation. Maybe you're put in that situation at an airport, maybe you're put in that situation at the doctor's office, at your job, at the university, I don't know, but it, it will happen. And so what does Allah say? These people, the people that have truly learned to walk on the earth with humility, qalu salam. They would just respond, peace. Now qalu salam is two things. It could be, one is that it's a quote. They just say, peace man. I'm a, I don't need to be, be a part of this. Meaning you heard something obnoxious and your blood boils and you want to respond and you say, oh yeah, you know how to curse? Well, I know about 10 more words than you do. I've got a lot more better practice vocabulary in cussing you out, you know. But you don't, you hold yourself back. You just, the one, and you, you swallow your anger. You swallow the anger and you just respond, peace. That's it, I don't, I don't want to do that. But also the word salaman could be a hal, meaning they respond peacefully. They respond in a calm way. They don't let their emotions get worked up. <coughs> Allah is telling you and me that that is a proof that you've actually learned and I've actually learned to walk on the earth with humility. This is not easy to accomplish. You see, the first part is, sounded pretty easy. Walk on the earth, I'm done. I'm just going to take low steps, you know, maybe get shoes that are softer a little bit and I'm going to hone in my mushy. I'm good. No, 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 no. 
This is about you and I controlling our temper, which is hard. And especially hard when there's someone who's testing their temper in front of you. Especially hard when somebody doesn't stop. Because they're not just being, you know, jahid at that time, they're just always like that. Every chance they get. And some of you can't even escape that. These are people in your family. They're friends, they're neighbors, they're always like that. And you're always being frustrated with them. These are the ayat about, about you, about me. Who we are taught to now just hold ourselves back, and that is how you become special people to Allah. A common misunderstanding of these ayat is that all of the descriptions that are mentioned in these ayat, and I've only given you one so far, all of them are describing the same people. That's not true. Between every ayah there's a lot. And, 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 and. And then there's an Isra Mosul repeated. Alladina, alladina, alladina. You know what that does? It actually makes it for every, every one of them is a different category of people. So, you know, to understand this better, all of us, Allah expects something from us. There's some minimum expectations Allah has from all of us. There are some things that are haram and they're haram for all of us. There are some things that are fault, they're fault for all of us. There are some things we have to believe and all of us have to believe. There's no difference. There's no different standards for you as opposed to me. But then there are people who after they meet their minimum standard, they excel in some things. They're really good at some things. And that's where we're all different. Some of you might be very good with your patience. Some of you might be very, very good with your salawat. Somebody might be very, very good with some other things, with their generosity. So people have special qualities. This passage is about people who meet the minimum requirements and then above and beyond that, they have some special qualities. And the first special quality was people who can control their temper. Which is especially, you know, it's, it's truly worth something to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Then the second, وَالَّذِينَ يَبِثُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا The second category of people are also people who spend the entire night before their master in sajda or standing up. Young guys sitting here go, that sounds really nice, but I have Netflix to watch at night. And there's Amazon, you know, on my phone now. I got, I got things to do at night. I got a ball game that starts at 10.30 at night. I don't, you'd be, you'd be uh, really grateful, you'd be amazed if I got up for Fajr. And I feel good about myself sometimes when I make Fajr at 11.30 a.m. Because the sun is still, it's not Bohr yet at least. That's the standard you're living by. So when you have, when you hear the ayat, these people spend the entire night in sajdah standing, the first thought that crosses many people's minds is, well, that's not me. Let me look for some other category. Let's cross that one off. You know? But what's, what's remarkable to me in these ayat is Allah says Ibadul Rahman, which even alludes to the fact that they have a special alaqa, a special relationship between them and Allah. But the first thing Allah did not mention is what's between them and Him. He mentioned what's between them and ignorant people first. He mentioned that first. And then He mentioned what's between Him and them, the standing in the middle of the night, the second category of people. But this is again, Bihamdillah. And by the grace and mercy of Allah, and praise be to Him. It's not something he mandated. It's not something he required from all of us that we stand in the middle of the night making sajda and making qiyam. That's a mercy from Allah Azza wa Some of you are good people. You, you, know, you go to work, you have your job, you have family obligations. By the time you get to, to sleep, maybe you pass out even after Isha, even if you don't want to sleep. Your body can't take it anymore. You just pass out on the couch or whatever. And then you wake up just in time for Fajr. You know what? You're not a bad person. Don't feel bad about yourself. You should look forward to some time at least trying to get up for Qiyam. But if you can't, at least you're not in sin. These are special qualities for special people. Maybe you should work on the first quality. And if you didn't make the first checklist, the second checklist, maybe you try the first checklist, work on your temper. وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اصْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ Third category of people. It's a category of people that say, Ya Allah, our master, just keep us away from the punishment of Jahannam. Inna adhabaha kana gharama. Its punishment is a huge penalty. Inna hasa'at mustaqarran wa muqama. It is a horrible place to be for a little while or for permanent residence. I don't want to be there. I don't want to have anything to do with Jahannam. Now why are these special people? They're just afraid of hellfire. You know why? Because there's a lot of Muslims. A lot of Muslims. They develop this thinking in their mind that at least they're Muslim. At least I'm Muslim, so yeah, I'm a little messed up. I miss a few salawat. I, you know, have the occasional haram consumption here and there. There are a couple of things I may have done on my mobile device that may not have been exactly Islamic. But at least I'm Muslim. 
At least that much, so I don't have to worry about you. I mean, it's not, it's not going to be that bad. Even if Allah does really, you know, by some miracle get really angry with me, maybe I'll go to Jahannam, I don't know, a weekend, a long weekend or something, and then I'll be out. It's not going to be for a long time. Because Muslims come out of Jahannam eventually. These people are special because they don't let their minds get corrupted by the idea that just because they are Muslim, that they're saved. They don't let the, that's a corruption of the mind. They are turning to Allah and they are saying, save us from the punishment of Jahannam. It is a horrible penalty. It is horrible even if you're there for a little while and if you're there long term. We don't want to we don't want to be around it. We don't want to feel its heat. We don't want to taste it even for a little. Bit. In another place in the Quran, in Surah Al Anbiya, Allah Azza wa Jal describes the the incapability of human beings to tolerate Jahannam. Though that ayah has a lot going on in it, I won't describe that particular ayah. I'll just allude to it. وَلَئِمْ مَسَّتْهُ النَّفْحَةُ مِنْ عَذَابِ رَبِّكَ لَيَقُولُنَّ يَا وَيْدَنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا ظَالِمِينَ Even if, you know, the air and the cold part of the air came out of Jahannam and touched them for a little bit. Not the fire. The fire didn't touch them. The air touched them. You know when you close the door, some air comes out of the room? Right? Now, that air could be hot or cold. But this one is cold. نَفْحَة If it was hot, it would have been نَفْحَة with the down. It's نَفْحَة with the room. It's cool. So it's not even the hottest part of Jahannam. And these people, because it comes out, the ishara is that the person who's tasting the air is not in Jahannam, he's outside Jahannam. He's not even in it yet. And he tastes just the air of Jahannam. He starts swearing to Allah that he, this is the worst punishment ever. Ya waylana. Ani wayli. La shay aswa yumkin. There's nothing worse possible. There's not, there's not worse possible. And he's swearing to the fact that this is way, You know? We have always been criminals. He starts confessing to all of his crimes. The idea in the ayah is, إِنَّهَا سَعَتْ مُسْتَقَرًا وَمُقَامًا It's a terrible place to be for a long time or a little. So we have to, I have to change the way I think about Jahannam. I can't have this attitude that at least I'm Muslim. At least I'm not as bad as that guy over there. Well, he's, yeah, he's gonna be there probably a couple of weeks. I, however, compared to him, I'm doing pretty good. You know, when you start comparing yourself to people that are more messed up than you are, then you already know you're going downhill. Because there's always going to be someone worse. You're going to get to a point where you're going to say, at least I'm not Tiraun. You know? <laughs> That's not an accomplishment. You know? That is not an accomplishment. We look, we compare ourselves to those that are better than us, not those that are worse. So people who can maintain that mentality, and at least they're afraid of Allah's hellfire, even those people are special to us. Allah made the checklist easier. He made it easy. instead of raising the bar, he lowered it. He said, okay, anybody afraid of Jahannam? Anybody asking me they don't want to go ever? And they wash themselves? And they genuinely ask me that? Even those people are special to me. Now I want you to remember the khabar of all of this muqtada. It was, ulaika yuzawna al-ghurfata bima sabaru. They get higher rewards and palaces in Jannah because they were patient. Because they showed perseverance and consistency. Sabar includes consistency and dawa. It, can, it, it includes that. So what does that mean for us then? It means the first category of people that control their temper, it's not a temporary thing guys, you gotta have sabr. You can't just say, I was holding my temper for like a whole month before I blew up. You can't do that, that doesn't count. That's not sabr, that's just you boiling it slowly instead of boiling it quickly. You gotta learn to let it go. It, it, and the people who make qiyam, they can't just make qiyam and then do other haram things, it's not like that. It's not like the people who now ask Allah to forgive them from hellfire. You, you know, in the heat of the moment, it's like the, one of the odd nights of Ramadan and the shaykh is making dua and you're behind him and everybody next to you is crying. So somehow it affects you and you start crying too. Even if you don't understand the dua, you're like, I mean, I don't want to go to hell, ya Rab, etc. But the high comes off and you go back to normal again. And that, you wait till next Ramadan before you turn to Allah and ask to be safe from Jahannam again. Then there's a problem. Then it's not sabr, then it's not consistency. These people get it because they were consistent. They were able to put one of these practices at least in their life, make it a part of their life. So now, Another special category of people to Allah. Well, like you didn't expect it. You know, when you read the passage and you read what's been described, you're like, you don't expect Allah to say this. But this is again from the mercy and love of Allah. That He said, another category of people that I especially love, that are dear to me that I will give highest levels of Jannah in, are people whenever they spend money, they don't spend too much. And they're not cheap either. They kind of find a balance in their budget. 
They balance their budget. Now, what does it mean spending too much? Ah, oh, just put it on the card, bro. It's okay, I, I got this, I got this. You just put it on the card. You go into Walmart and you just everything just goes in the card. Everything goes in the card. You don't, you know, you don't need a, everything, but you just throw it in there anyway. If some of you guys make a stop at GameStop, it's a necessary stop for you for one, once a month at least. You know, and you buy any game you can find, and you stack them up in your house. There's a huge collection of video games in your house, or movies, or this, or and you just spend, 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 spend. I say, ah, don't worry about it. I, I'll cover it. The only time you think about spend, spending, though. And you say we should be financially responsible, is if there's like the, there's a call for sadaqah or the masjid or something, then immediately shaitan becomes a CPA and he comes to you and he says, listen, you have college tuition, you have electricity bills, you have you have the car payment, you haven't gotten an oil change yet, you have to you know fix the tire, remember that? Remember you have, to, you have to fix the backyard a little bit? You have all these expenses. Just think about this. I want you to be responsible financially. He does not come to you when you're swiping the card at the movie theater. He does not come to you when you're ordering like cake at the hotel. He doesn't come to you and say, hey, think about your college tuition. Nope. But even if one dollar is going to leave you for the sake of Allah, all of a sudden, certified professional accounting. You know? Allah says these people are not wasteful spenders. Let me speak to you. And Islam is important to understand. Allah didn't even talk about tabdeer here, because that's elite. Very rich people do tabdeer. Most people, they might end up doing Islam. Islam is relative to each of you. You know what it is? It's you have, you know, you could, we all have to eat food, we do, but if you go and spend too much on food, there's a problem. We all have to dress in clothes, but if you wait, like you're gonna wait for that special brand and that, that sneaker to come out that you're gonna pay $300 for because, you know, that was made by some special child labor factory in Thailand, then, you know, then you've got yourself a problem because I need to wear those Jordans and I already need to wear the, you know, the whatever. I need to have that on me. That, that's a problem. That's a problem. And at the other, on the other side, the yaftu, they're not cheap either. They don't hold themselves back either all the time. It's not like you keep your family from even doing normal groceries. Like you go to the grocery store with your wife and she puts some milk in the cart and you say, woman, you need all that milk? Get the smaller one. Or, you know, don't do that either. They, they find a way in between. They find a way to be responsible financially. They don't, don't, they don't get into transactions they can't handle. I'll say that again, they don't get into transactions they can't handle. Your credit agency might give you credit, oh you have a good job, you have a good credit score, blah blah blah, here's 500,000 or here's $600,000 worth of credit, you can go get yourself a house. Now you should be getting a house maybe within your budget, a couple of hundred thousand, maybe 150,000 to it, but you're approved for six. And it's like Islamic banking. So why not just go for like 599? and then be in debt the rest of your life, and then say, I can't go to Hajj. Why not do that, huh? So we people do that. We become financially irresponsible when we're tempted. So Allah says financial responsibility is even a special quality. And you know, in these times, we can appreciate why it's so special. If people in this country and around the world were financially responsible, we would not have the financial crises we're seeing. They all, at the end of the day, boil down to spending more than you can afford, taking out more than you can handle by individuals, then by institutions, and even by countries. So countries are in years and years and years of debt. Moving along quickly, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَاهَ الْآخَرِ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا مِنْ حَقِّ You know? Well, actually, it's in the other order. وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا مِنْ حَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَوْقَ أَثَامًا Allah says there are another category of people that are very special to me. Look, Allah keeps widening the door. The door was open first, control your temper. And he said, no, let more people in. People who make Qiyam day, they're special too. Then he opened it more, okay. So then people who, you know, subhanAllah, they ask me to be saved from Jahannam. Then let me just open it some more. People who are financially responsible. Then he says, those who only call on me and don't call on anybody else. They only make dua to me. He opened it wider, didn't he? And he says, you know, وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّذِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ And they don't kill anybody. At least every one of us can check that one hopefully. Check, I haven't killed anyone. And I don't do shirk. At least that one we can check. وَلَا يَزْنُونَ And they don't commit zina. They don't commit adultery. They stay away from that, that heinous act. They don't become like animals in their temptations. وَلَا يَزْنُونَ Now why did Allah open this door and why is it special? Because for some people this is very hard. Even worshipping one God, if you're the only Muslim in your family, you know, then it's not easy for you to just call on Allah. 
If you've been raised a certain way and you came to Islam, for those of you that are raised in Islam, it's easy. For those of you that are not, it's very challenging. Those of you that are, maybe, maybe there are some young men in some place in the world where they're just picking young people up and throwing them in gangs and making them kill. That's happening in the world, it's a reality. There's some kid who gets picked up on, on the streets in Detroit and he's forced into a gang and he's like, he's gotta kill somebody to get initiated. And he refuses to kill, then that's special to Allah. What I have to and I've said that the Harla Allah will not have. It may it may not be very hard for you, it may be very hard for someone else. What I have known, and maybe a young man goes to college, maybe goes to University of Michigan. And you know, he's a young man, and there's girls all around him, and they're just throwing themselves at him. And he's like, Astaghfirullah, 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 Astaghfirullah. How many times he's gonna say Astaghfirullah? And he's like, Ya Allah, I'm drowning here. It's not like I don't have hormones. You know, you gave me those, but I'm still holding myself back. Then to that, to, to that Allah says, these people are special and they've got salah. Whoever would do that is going to get a huge penalty. Punishment for that kind of person will be doubled on judgment day. Because he's a Muslim and he did it. You know? And he will stay in it humiliated. Illa man ta'ala. And even though Allah's mercy in these ayat, you are so messed up even after being Muslim, somebody commits shit, somebody does murder, somebody does zina. Allah says, even after that, if you can just make tawbah, illa man ta'ala, wa amana, wa amila amalan salihan, and someone who did tawbah, and then, you know, revived their faith, became believers all over again. It's like they're starting fresh. And this time they really took care of their good deeds. Then Allah is willing to replace all of their sins by good deeds. In other words, these were the worst of people. And just by tawbah, in all of this list, automatically, in one snap of one tawbah, they become the best of them. All of their good deeds get converted to, all of their bad deeds converted to good deeds. Just by tawbah. Allah is opening His doors to Jannah for you and me, if we can become people of tawbah. And if Allah can forgive murder, and He can forgive zina, and He can forgive even shirk, the worst crime of all, you can forgive those with the, with the road of tawbah. What have you done that Allah won't forgive? Nobody can say Allah won't forgive. He took the worst crimes possible from humanity and said, I'll forgive those. So then the doors to tawbah are open for every human being. This is from the mercy of Allah Azza wa You know, وَمَنْ تَابَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَتَابَ As I close, inshallah, I know I'm over my time. Whoever does make tawbah in any other thing, this is the more general ayah. Then his tawbah is also very good. You don't have to do the worst things and then make tawbah. Allah said in the next ayah, you know, clarified for us that it's everybody else who does any kind of tawbah and revives their faith, that's also a very powerful tawbah. I'm still acknowledging that, that repentance also. But now once you get reformed, please listen to this carefully. Once you do change, once you decide you're going to leave sin, and you want to become a different kind of person, and you make tawbah, then, you know how they say, in so, uh, social workers, they tell you there are some things called gateway drugs, right? There's alcohol as a gateway drug to worse drugs. You know, marijuana is a startup drug, and you get into worse and worse and worse drugs. There are gateway crimes. So you sm start small and it snowballs into big things. These people who were in the worst of sins know that it didn't start like that. It started with something small. And then it got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. But now that they have made tawbah, now Allah mentions how they prevent the gateway from ever opening. They are people. It's very beautiful. A special category of people are those who don't, they, they don't stand around when false bad things are happening, evil things are happening, false testimonies being given. They don't, they're not around that stuff. And if they do pass by people wasting their time, if they are at a party where people are just talking trash, if they are you know, just you know, hanging out in college and in the lobby some guys are just running their mouth, marru kiraman, they walk by decently, they don't need into that conversation. Hours can go by and you can have kalam pauti, you can have that, you know? Hours can go by and you can just suck on some hookah at a restaurant and five, six hours go by and you've done nothing with your life. I know I'm in Detroit, I know. You know? إِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِي مَرُّوا كِرَامًا And they walk by, they don't make a scene like, you people are doing haram, أَلَا تَعْرِفُونَ الْآيَةَ They don't do that. They don't do that. But they walk by, so I'm like, guys, I gotta go. And that's it. They leave in a decent fashion. They don't make other people feel bad, but they know this will lead to worse things. This will lead to worse and worse and worse things. 
these are the people Allah says, all of the, all of the above will get special place with Him in Jannah. And they are going to be greeted with the most amazing salutations. May Allah Azza wa qualify us for all of these qualifications, but, and, and through them, open up the gates of Jannah for each and, each and every one of us and our families. Barakallahu alayhi wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikri al-Hakim. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salam ala ibadihi al-lati nasbata khususan ala afwadihim wa khatim al-jamiyin Muhammadin al-Ali wa ala alihi wa sahbihi al-Jamiyin Yaqul Allah Azza wa Jal fi kitabih al-Kareem Fa'adhan aqula a'udhu billahi min al-Shaytan al-Rajim Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallun ala al-Nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi Muhammad Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala alihi wa rahimah fil alameen Innaka hamidu majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi Muhammad كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا مرفوقا <تصفيق> الله أكبر